Hey guys, we're gonna play a game today in our editing software where we're gonna take the same image and create three different looks. If you are new here, my name is Riley Clark. I am an outdoor nature photographer. This channel primarily focuses on my outdoor adventures and some of my DIY outdoor projects, such as a van conversion that we did last summer. If you guys like all that type of content, then you will probably like this channel and maybe consider hitting the subscribe button down below. From time to time, I also do some editing breakdowns like we are doing today. So if you guys want to learn the art of photography and, and filmmaking, then you also would enjoy this channel. But my primary focus is taking you guys in the field with me when I am out on my photography adventures. If you can't tell, I am running a little bit of a cold right now, so thank you for your patience. But that is enough of me yammering. Let's jump into the computer and start practicing with some editing. Okay, so now that we are in Lightroom, we need to go ahead and set up the three different files for us to uh, be able to practice with this new technique. So what I'm first gonna do is come down here to the image, I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna hit create virtual copy, and I will do that two times since we're gonna do a two colored edits and one black and white edit. Okay, so now that what I wanna do is actually just do my basic edits on this. Now this was actually shot post sunset. Uh, well, it is in the middle of sunset, but the sun has already come down uh, be behind the mountain, so it's actually, kind of closer to blue hour than it is to that golden hour, that sunset shot. So we have a lot of the image in shadow, of course. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come over to the profile and I'm gonna switch it over to landscape profile. I often use a linear profile in my editing, but you can see it creates a really flat image. And for just the speed of what we're doing today, I think it's just gonna be easier for us to go to landscape rather than going down the rabbit hole of a linear profile. So. Uh, what I want to do from here, if you look up on my histogram, you can see a lot of the information is pushed way to the left. So I want to go ahead and bring up the shadows. And you can see I recovered a lot of those shadows. And then I might also bring up some of the blacks. Now one thing that you can do is to check your black point and your white point is if you hold Alt or Option on your keyboard while clicking, you'll be able to see what is becoming black and where it is not. I typically like to have things right where they're about to touch black. Um, but not fully black. And I'm gonna stop for a second just to let you guys know that I can dive more into my workflow in future videos, but typically these sliders, I use these for global edits to try to get my image as neutral as possible. And then from there, I go in and use localized edits to create the feeling that I want. So again, I'm trying to just create a nice even canvas for us to then just go push and pull this image where we want it to go. Let's go ahead and drop some of the highlights, not a ton, we're retaining, we're actually bringing back some information in those clouds, which is nice. We're not really affecting the front part of the image as much. I'm just gonna drop that in here, and then let's check where our white point is. I think I might push the whites just right there and drop the highlights again, just a touch. I'm gonna go ahead and pull down some of the clarity. Just it softens the image overall. I don't wanna try to create a real crunchy looking image here. Um, it's just preference. I'm not gonna mess with vibrance and saturation just yet, but what I am gonna do is come down here to this tone curve and I'm going to create the lights up just a touch. And you can see it gave us a nice bit of contrast here in the foreground. It is starting to blow out the sky a little bit, but we're gonna fix that here in a second. So now what I wanna do is actually balance this image out even more before I start touching color because as you start changing tonal range, your color is gonna change. So I usually like to get a well-balanced image first before I even touch color. So how I'm gonna do that is balance out the sky and the foreground a little bit more. I'm gonna come up here, click our mask icon here, and then I'm going to select the sky. Let AI do its thing. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is soften this edge. So I'm going to click on these three dots, hit intersect mask with a linear gradient, and I'm just going to drag a linear gradient just to soften that up a touch. Now what we can do is come up here, pull the highlights down again, pull the whites down, add some contrast, pull the blacks. Yeah, it's gonna add some punch to that sky, which is cool. And I wanna come down here, and I'm gonna increase the clarity just a touch. Awesome, now this is what we've come to this point. This is our before, this is our after. Before and after. Decent, we're getting somewhere. Now let's go ahead and start 
to draw our viewer's eye in the direction that we want it to go. So again, I'm not touching any color yet. I'm just going to work with tones. And then at the end, I'm gonna start messing with the color. I want to lead our viewer into this area a little bit more. And one of the ways we can do that is with a linear gradient. If I come down here, select a linear gradient, drag it all the way like this, and ever so slightly pull the whites down. And you can see I've zoomed way out on my screen because I don't want to bl black this area out like that. I also don't want to overdo it. I want it to be a very subtle edit and you can usually see the subtle natures from a smaller thumbnail. Um, so that's typically what I'd like to do. And I like to pull the whites down because if you start to pull down exposure, you're gonna crush your blacks quite a bit. Um, I might mess with exposure a little bit, but whites usually just pulls off the, some of that punch. And so then I might pull up the shadows just a touch and then drop the, the exposure. Now what I wanna do is create a radial gradient right in the middle of this. And then I actually want to subtract the sky, cool. And then I want to intersect that with a linear gradient to soften that. Now what we can do is come up here and grab our whites. And we're probably gonna increase the exposure a touch. And we're gonna probably add a little bit of contrast. And I'm gonna come down add just a bit of saturation. And yeah, let's do a best with that, just a little bit more. And I actually might widen this. So you can see I brightened up the center part of the image quite a bit compared to um, how it was before. And I still didn't lose all this information down here. It's still there for the viewer to see, but it's a lot more subtle and it's drawing our eye into uh, the scene a little bit more. So this is again, before and after total. Let's look at uh, the before and after the masks. So that's before the masks, after the masks, before, after. A lot more three-dimensional and looking really good. This area over here is a bit distracting, so I'm gonna come over here with a brush. And I might also brush this down here. Let's pull the whites down. Maybe a touch of exposure down, okay. So let's look at what that mask did. And let's go through individually on all these masks. How about that? So there's our sky. Here's our foreground. There's the midground brightening. I might come back and adjust this because you can see it's a, it's hitting those mountains in the background. I don't know if I like that or not yet. And then on the side. But I guess for video's sake, it's fine. This is very quick. I, I typically. Um, and a little bit slower with my editing, but this is definitely a fast edit before and after and Then all of it before and after now that is pretty much All I'm gonna do right now. I could definitely uh, You know spend a lot of time on this, but again, I'm working quickly, which is kind of a part of this exercise that we're doing um, I want to get more to the color side of it and the creative side, but I so I'm not going to spend too much time on this type of editing um, But what I'm going to do here is actually copy Everything that we've done and I'm going to paste them on these two images just so we don't have to Fiddle around with all those edits again. Let's uh, start to do our warm color grade here. Okay? So the first thing that we can do is come up here and mess with some of these white balance settings. Let's try auto. It didn't really do anything on auto. Daylight, really cool. Cloudy, kind of magenta-y and warm. Shade, that might be it right there. That looks really nice. Tungsten, ugh, fluorescent. I'm just going through this for the fun of it. Flash doesn't look terrible for blue hour. Well, let's go back to shade and let's let's start from here as for our warm edit I want to go ahead and I want to mute a lot of the shadow colors So there's a few ways we could do that We could pull down our vibrance Which is going to mute the colors that are not really that saturated and then we can boost our saturation Which will saturate the already saturated colors. So let's go ahead and mess with that. Let's pull down some vibrance and pull up some saturation, okay? And then this is supposed to be a warm edit, so I'm going to warm it up 
just a little bit. I'm gonna click in, hold shift, and press up on my keyboard until it gets too warm for my liking. Kind of err on the side of over, overboard because you're starting to train your eye in terms of color, right? Now let's come in here and let's pull out some of the saturation on some of our cooler tones. I'm gonna pull a ton of the magenta out because it's gonna hit those clouds. Okay. And then I might actually boost the yellows up a little bit because you see it's touching all those green colors. Some of the orangeness out. Okay. And we don't want to overdo the red because it's getting a little overboard up there up top. So that's before and after. So before, after, very subtle, but it is cleaning it up. We can compare this to our image before. So this is kind of the first edit, which is close to the cool side of things. And this is our warm edit on the left. And I did that by hitting C and that you click one of the images and it lets you do that. So now let's go into doing some color grading a touch and then we'll mess with the sky because the sky is definitely getting a little weird. So let's go into our shadows and let us pull this towards blue ever so slightly. But kind of like a warmer blue, like towards magenta. Not like that, but and we could pull the luminance down just a hair. And then let's go to our highlights and let's do the opposite color or more of a warm tone. Again, you kind of really overdo it. It helps you see the color balance a little bit easier that way. So I'm thinking somewhere in like that range. And then I can come in here and pull the saturation way back. Again, you're not looking at like, is this good, is this bad? You're just trying to say, hey, I'm creating a warm image. Now the last bit I wanna do is create a vignette. And I'm gonna do a custom vignette. So let's zoom out. I'm going to grab a radial gradient. And I want to have the, the nose of that radial gradient right in the middle of uh, that sun there. And we, how I usually like to do this is I like to do it two steps. The first one, I'm gonna do it just like this and increase the whites and the contrast and the saturation and a little bit of clarity. And then I'm gonna create another one, even bigger, same spot. I'm gonna invert it, drop the whites down and a touch of this, or the exposure down and a touch of the saturation. Again, not going for perfect or beautiful or how you would actually really go with it on this image because I would actually probably edit this more of a cooler tone. Um, this is just going quickly and trying to mess with different color tones and see the differences you can create. So let's jump to the cold one. And we're actually pretty close there, but what we need to do, let us go up here and start messing with color immediately. Pull down the blue tones Let's increase the magenta a touch. Then I'm going to pull down the vibrance a little bit and boost saturation. Actually, we might even try the other way. Yeah, let's pull down the saturation and boost vibrance on this one. And then because this is blue hour, I actually want to darken it a touch. Okie dokie. Now let's do some color grading. But first, let's do our color grading in our HSL secondary. I want to see the reds up there. I actually want to maybe warm those up a touch or put a little bit more orange to them. I think it's gonna balance out with our bluer tones better. Same with here, a little bit more orange and a little more desaturated essentially. Let's push our greens towards that tealer color. And if you can see, I grab the slider and I go back and forth because that gives me a good indication of maybe where, what color I'm messing with. And I'm working pretty quick. Awesome. Then we go to saturation. I wanna pull some of that aqua out and some of that blue. So the thing is about creating a bluer image or blue hour image, you gotta be careful having too much of it in there. If not, it starts to look a little blotchy. So it's okay to pull some of the saturation out. If you think about how a blue hour image is, you don't typically have a ton of vibrant color in it. Drastically different. I mean, I actually technically like the one on the right a little bit better, 
than the one on the left, but hey, we're here practicing. And then I wanna come down here to our mid-tones and I wanna boost the mid-tones a little bit and add some like warmth and saturation to them. And then let's go to the shadows and add a little bit of blue tone to them. Sometimes it helps to go really saturated and then just to mess with it from there. Okay, that tone looks really nice, so I'm gonna pull that down, saturation back, and that's kind of what we got from there. And let's pull down the luminance and maybe balance it towards the blue a touch. Okay, same thing, I'm gonna create a vignette, invert this, pull the whites down, other one like we did, and pull the whites up. Awesome, that's before and after total. And then let's compare it to, so there's two completely different images. Now, I do personally like the blue tone better. It does match the tonality of this image a lot better, but that's not, the, again, the purpose of this exercise. The purpose is for us to uh, look at pushing ourselves in terms of, an, as editing, so. Last bit is editing a black and white image. So it's easy for us to go in and create a black and white image by pulling the saturation and the vibrance all the way down. That is not the way you should do it. What we need to do is come up here and click on this treatment black and white. This is going to be a lot better for us to work in. Now I'm gonna go ahead and boost the overall exposure, add some contrast, and I'm gonna boost the whites until I get some white creeping in and bring down the blacks. And the whites are overdone just a touch. Cool. I usually actually like to add some clarity with black and white images, but we need to go up here and mess with this sky quite a bit. We're losing a lot of detail in the sky. So let's pull down some exposure. Let's pull down some highlights. Let's pull up some shadows and add some contrast. I should get rid of some contrast. And actually, I'm probably gonna get rid of a lot of contrast globally. We're overdone. That's looking a lot better before and after. Now, let's come down here. If you notice in your where your HSL secondary would be, you now have a black and white. If we click auto, we can see what it's gonna do here. It's gonna move a bunch of these colors around for us. It actually looks pretty good. But what I like to do is come in here and swing back and forth and see what colors are affecting part of it, what part of our image, right? So actually I do like what Otto did. Okay, now we just need to add a vignette. Boost up the whites, add some contrast, and then let's add another radial gradient, even bigger, invert this one, and pull some of the whites down. Maybe add some blacks in, maybe drop the exposure. And the thing is with the black and white is don't be afraid to have things clipping on in the blacks and the whites. That's where you get a nice true black and white image. And actually typically what's good about this exercise is that we actually process the image in color before we converted it to black and white. And I'm not a great black and white photographer, but anytime I have developed a, a decent looking black and white image, I've actually done it in color first and then converted it into black and white and fine tuned it from there. And I've always actually seemed to have uh, a good representation of the image because color can often show us where our tones are off. And if your tones are off, your color's always gonna be off. That's why in the beginning I always, I was pushing to get our tonality correct before we looked at color. Um, I think that's one of the best things with this exercise that I can, give you guys as a takeaway is get your tones right and then practice with the color. Well guys, this was uh, probably one of the first more in-depth editing videos I've created for you. If you liked this video, then please consider hitting the subscribe button down below and give it a thumbs up if you learned something new. If you guys want to see more editing breakdowns or more behind the scenes uh, editing 
practices like this, then drop a comment and let me know what you would like me to create next. Now, I am hoping to get out in the field again soon because making videos in the office over and over again gets old for me. I know it can get old for you guys too. That is gonna be it. I will see you guys in next week's video. Make sure you guys hit the bell icon so you're notified when I post that video. Other than that, I'm gonna go and take some medicine and try to get this summer cold kicked. Mm -hmm.